and welcome back to Anonymous Review, where today we're reviewing the movie Chappie. I'm Wesley Boone, and this is my co-host, Emily Strasser. Hello! And, yeah, let's begin. Okay, so the menu for today, um, if you're new to the show, is we talk about the show, the movie, or show, whichever, and we, we discuss our sort of general opinions or feelings about it, you know, how we liked it, what we liked. But it's generally spoiler-free. Uh, we then give a rating out of some arbitrary number system. <laughs> And then we then go into sort of spoiler territory where we maybe break it down a little bit more. So, yes, welcome, Emily. I don't know, do you want to start on your opinions on the movie? Um, I, like, I, I, I must say I'm quite pleased with it. You know, I remember you telling me that some people were saying it wasn't that good. Yeah, I, I'd, I'd gotten on, I went on to Rotten Tomatoes. Uh, it's not my go-to source, but what I do like about it is that it's got two different ratings. It's got the critique rating and then it's got the public rating. And it got a 30% on Rotten Tomatoes, but on on, on the, the, the public rating, it was 60%. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it, that was, I was immediately sort of, hmm, about it. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I, like, it, it, it was definitely, like, I have seen, because you said this was the same director as District 9, right? District 9 and Elysium. His name is Neil, I think, Neil Blomkamp. I, I'm not or, really... or Blomkamp, as, as the North Americans want to say. <laughs> sure. Um, but it's Blomkamp for you Philistines out there. <laughs> Doesn't matter, it's Afrikaans. Please continue. Okay. <laughs> I was just giving him a look. <laughs> uh, yes. So, I actually personally liked it. I It was definitely really gritty, but it also had a nice, you know, tug on your heartstrings, feel bad for the poor robot thing. Uh, I don't know. I mean, it was... There were some, I mean, like like we discussed, there were some nitpicky things, and oh, as, sure. as you, you know, after you said the, your critique of it, I started thinking, yeah, you know, now that you mention it. Yeah, um, we, we usually go watch a lot of movies together, mostly because I guess we're seeing each other, and also <laughs> because we, I, I love watching movies, and I take Emily with me wherever I go, <laughs> carry her in my handbag. <laughs> but, well, okay, so a quick synopsis of the film, I guess, from what we've seen of the trailers. A, a man develops an artificial intelligence, um, a, a pure, he, he basically digitizes or recreates thought, you know, he creates a, f a fully op uh, created um, uh, artificial intelligence, he creates intelligence that has to learn. Mm. And so then this robot goes out and learns in a, sort of a, you know, I wouldn't really say dystopia, but sort of a, it's a, it's, a, it's a very destroyed city, it's Johannesburg, it's a lot of crime. <laughs> And so this robot goes out and he ends up in the in the hands of some thugs mm -hmm. and they want to use him to commit some crimes. And so what this robot like learns gradually, he's got five days to live. Yeah. Because his battery pack, but okay, well we'll find that out in the movie, but that's right in the beginning. Yeah. Yeah, so he goes out and he has to learn his, and he's got to recover. And then you actually see, I guess, in the trailer him gradually learning. I, I noticed this one comment people were always picking on the movie for well, not always, but like two or three people were like Oh, it's a robot that watches He-Man. The movie in the movie, the, he sees He-Man for like three seconds. He sees the intro of the He-Man cartoon, and that's it, really. Yeah. And the idea behind that in the movie sequence, I think, is um, th that the, the robot's like seeing this hero. And as a kid, when you see your heroes, that's who you want to be, right? Who, as I mean, I don't know about little girls, but as a little boy, who didn't want to be He-Man? You wanted to also be the the big, strong muscle man with a sword and riding. Bloody I wanted to be cat. an X-Men when I was a kid. Yeah, X-Men, or, I mean, you, you want the powers, you want to be good. Um, I also wanted to be a gargoyle. <laughs> from from Disney's Gargoyles? I freaking love that show. Oh, that show. was an awesome show, oh. yeah. we, should, we should watch that and then review it. Oh, heck yeah. Because it's, it's like one of those weird shows that like a lot of people, like everybody I know who has seen it loves it. Yeah. But then, have you ever seen a cartoon called Fish Police? No. Oh, I'm going to show that to you. I really liked it. <laughs> There's only like six episodes. It didn't, it didn't get picked up, but it was. It, it, I liked it. Very adult, actually, at times. <laughs> but anyway, yeah. So that's the, the, the gist of the of the movie. Mm. Uh, I don't know if there's anything else you want to add on about your first impressions. Um, It was better than I thought. Like, I was a little bit... Because, I mean, maybe if I watched it again, I'd have a different opinion on it. But I was... I, it's not that I didn't like District 9, it was just that I didn't like it as much as I hoped. Mm. This one, I kind of came in thinking, this is going to be another District 9, I'm going to be really disappointed at the end. Well, f like I told you after we watched it, I think it was another District 9. Yeah, well... It pretty was, much had the same story structure. Yeah, there was a lot of similarities, which I'll get to in the spoiler section of it, mm. but... Um, 
Like, I don't know. Maybe maybe this isn't this is a reason I need to watch District 9 again. Maybe I'll like it better the second time. Yeah. I don't think the movie deserved its 30%. Yeah. Because there was a lot of nice action in the movie. You do feel for the characters, like Chappie, you do care for. Mm-hmm. Um, There's a nice texturing of the pacing of the film. Yeah. Uh, there was definitely... I, I don't know. There was, like, a nice... Definitely a lot of really gritty gangster violence parts mm. mixed in with the sentimental value. But it was... And like, but that's what I like, too. And, and Blomkamp really does... Because, okay, just in case nobody knows, I am South African. He does sort of capture the... the um, okay... One of the first things I felt in this movie while I was watching, like, the whole beginning part of it, in fact, even towards the end, I suppose, mm. this movie felt like Robocop. <laughs> like, the first Robocop movie. It was like, okay, we got these human... Not necessarily in the sense that the human became a humanoid cop, but there was the giant ro- hulking robot that wasn't needed because they've got this humanoid robot army force, for, and they're actual just little robots, you know, they're mm. called scouts or something. And, um, look, I don't see in a million years, like, South Africa has got the surprising, like, we've got surprisingly amazing engineers, and we've invented a lot of stuff that people, like other countries, are, like, take credit for. And by we, I don't mean me, because I'm nowhere near intelligent enough to be an engineer, <laughs> but, like, a lot of South African engineers, like, I, you, you do some research, like, oh, what was that guy? It was like this other guy who created he created one of the defense keys for for Internet Explorer a couple of hundred years a million of years ago, and <laughs> just to be sure it was like ten years ago. But I mean we we have like a lot of these guys who invent things and um, I just can't remember this dude's name but he was very popular he was also the first South African in space, but nobody says oh that was made by a South African mm-hmm. you know and I mean there's there's a lot of like uh, if I'm not mistaken I believe the first heart transplant was done in South Africa. Was it the first heart transplant or the first bypass? I can't remember. Something to do with the heart. Yeah, we do that to Canadians too in yeah. America. It's like it's like yeah, you were born in Canada, but you're actually American. Yeah, but but you see, what usually happens is um, the device gets invented in South Africa or by by an invent, and then most of the time they're probably already in the states or already in the UK doing the invention there. So it technically, becomes a United States or a United Kingdom invention. Mm. And it's like, okay, fine, whatever. You know, then we just have like a little bit of pride. Oh, South African actually invented it using American education system. You know, the tertiary stuff, not the <laughs> not the public stuff. And, you know, it's like it, that those robots would not have been firstly made in South Africa. Because one thing I know about South African business is that we are we don't invest in anything new. If it's not done in the States or the UK, we will not invest in it in South Africa. Heck. To the point that it's failing in the States and we'll invest it only because the States in, in, invested it. Nuclear power, cough. Sorry, it's something in my throat. <laughs> I'm not kidding. We, we uh, I think it was the pebble bed reactors. The United States didn't want to use. Now you got to remember, pebble bed reactors are cheap. Like nuclear pebble bed reactors. I'm not exactly sure what that all means, but I do know that they're cheaper than normal nuclear reactors. Mm-hmm. And apparently, you guys didn't want to use them because they were too dangerous, but they were cheap, which is saying something because if the Americans don't want to do something for cheap and then they come over to us and like, yeah, you do the pebble bed reactors. We're like, yay. And I don't think we did it in the end, but we were like, that's kind of amazing because we'd rather poison our population than make food slightly more expensive and less deadly. That's how dangerous those, (laughs) at the the time, this was like, what, 2004, it was a long time ago. But um, well, I mean, if the Americans think it's too dangerous, it's really dangerous. <laughs> yeah, so don't, don't do it. So that that's so I wouldn't like that. That's another thing that was like, oh, this wouldn't happen in South Africa. This would happen in the States first. But I get why they put it in South Africa because Neil Blomkamp wants obviously South Africa to get more recognized, and um, and he's been doing that really well. District Nine did a pretty good job of it, um, mm-hmm. and that told a much better story of some, you know, um, uh, you know, like oppression of of a species or a, or a people. You know, these these um, prawns, these aliens coming yeah. down, they crash land on Earth. They're exiles, basically. And and as is the history of South Africa, instead of, oh, let's set up some diplomatic, like, you know, mm-hmm. system. It's like, no, let's just put them in the low, low, poor district and they can just sort of... I mean, and now off they go. They've got this amazing technology, which we can't escape. And then, off, and then they <laughs> manage to eventually leave. What do you think they're going to do? I really think District 9 Part 2 is going to probably be like a war movie or something. Oh, boy. But maybe oh, not. I, I thought they were making a second one. I, I heard, but nothing's really coming of it. I think it was one of those things where it's like, people want it, but uh, aren't okay. doing anything about it. So, yeah. Um, so, this movie has a lot of that. Anyway, so it's a lot of Robocop feel to it where um, 
I, like while I was watching the whole intro, I was like, this is Robocop. I'm watching <laughs> Robocop. Um, whereas a lot of people, there, there was another, what's the name of that robot movie? I never saw it, but a lot of people likened this to it. Was that robot that was also learning? It also got AI. It was a Steven Spielberg movie, I believe. Oh, uh, did it have Robin Williams? Mm, I don't think so. I never saw it, so. Uh, there was, I, uh, there was, oh wait, was it AI? No. Oh, shh. Um, it, was, it was like Spielberg, a, wasn't it? yeah, yeah, but this was like this was a movie like made in the eighties. Oh, oh, oh. Um, I don't know then. Yeah, um, I'm gonna give a quick look, but it's, it's, it's if I could just remember. No, I, I can't find anything of the, of the. But yeah, there was this old movie that uh, like people were likening it to more, and since I hadn't really seen it, like I can't really say that um, that that I feel the same way. But I do feel that this movie borrowed heavily from RoboCop. Um, and yeah, I mean, even from District Nine, I think uh, even watching Elysium, which is Bond Cup's second movie um, as a director, I guess, because I mean he's an actor too. Yeah. He uh, he borrows also heavily from himself, and as we all know, as you probably know, I don't think the listeners so much know about my opinion with um, Tim Burton is when you start <laughs> re referencing yourself that it looks like a bad copy of yourself. That I don't. I don't like it as much anymore. But mm. at the same point, that, that was really just Elysium to me. And Elysium, that's a whole different movie to review, but I didn't, I, that one I didn't like. I like, I did like Chappie though. Um, I, I, I liked the learning of the, like, I liked how the robot learned. Mm. I liked how he adapted and he, he like, in the beginning, yeah, he, he's this little kid. And then at the end, he's Chappie. He, it's, it's such a great character. I felt it was a great character development for the robot and not even just the robot even the gangsters learned yeah like um the the the, the main protagonist um dion, dion yeah like he like he from the get-go knew what he what he had made because he was the creator of the artificial intelligence um but and he had respect for the because he knew he created intelligence that it had to be treated like intelligence yeah. the gangsters at first were all like no it's just a robot mm. and then slowly start learning like oh wait no this is actually a thinking living creature and then the, the the main protagonist was also like he eventually learns too, but to the point where he's like, no, this is an abomination. Yeah. Um, yeah. So it's uh, man, like, would I recommend this movie to people? Yeah, maybe not necessarily. Like, if if okay, if you're really into action heavy stuff, you know, you love explosions and you love, you know, that that moment when like the sacrifice play gets put into the movie. You know, if you like excitement and you and you just really you just want to watch a, a bombastic movie sure mm. you know go watch it go watch it in the big screen it's got some nice sound it's got some nice visuals the the effects are really nice i mean the robots are obviously cg yeah but they're like it's done so well and i mean yeah cg's come a long way but yeah i would recommend that if you're there, there's a lot of there's a lot of plot holes a lot of plot holes, <laughs> a lot of flaws in the story scripting and if you're a if you're a, a stickler for that to a point that you can't enjoy a movie just because of a couple of plot holes, then no, this movie's not for you because there are a lot. It's definitely, um, it's definitely not a thing that everyone would like, but I can imagine there are a few people like me. I'm, I, I don't know. I love, I love the sci-fi. I love the sentimental sci-fi. I love the sci-fi about the robots and they're learning to be people. Um, it's as I've ex it, like it's one of the reasons I've explained to you why I like uh, the Animatrix better than the Matrix is because it's you know there's a lot of there's like a lot of weird like especially with the the second Renaissance I love the whole history of what the humans did to the robots and I don't know I just I like robots okay that's what <laughs> I want to say I really instant ten out of ten because of robots <laughs> <laughs> yeah um, yeah I, I I mean and then the designs of the robot the robot was pretty cool. I mean, it was just a little humanoid robot, but I liked the little toy that they had on his desk. Mm. And I would love to get one of those, because I just like the, the... I like the general design of Chappie. I like the aerials or his ears. And, like, then just, like, the... Um, he's got, like, like handlebars that they look like on his face for his eyebrows and his mouth. Yeah. And then the way that they would lift up and down, because his eyes were just, like, two little diodes, really. Mm. You know, or, or it was like a, an LCD screen that... Not even an LCD screen. What do you call those... Those, like those dot matrix screens that that's all it was it was just to show that it was online and that like you could see like little angry face <laughs> later on like he got genuinely angry a robot getting angry you know he, he felt angry he felt um you know he like it was weird because again when you feel those things right yeah like this is this is where the problem comes in for me um because i know i know 
as a very, as a, a, somebody who just dabbles in, like I read Wikipedia articles about how brains work. You know, I don't, <laughs> I'm not a scientist. I'm just someone who likes science. You know, I'm a science fan. That's about as far as that goes. I wouldn't know equations and I wouldn't know how to apply them. But I do know when I read the theorem or whatever, I'm like, oh, okay, that's really interesting. And that's why I, I get excited about stuff. Now, the human brain, the reason why you feel anger is because there's little bits and pieces of whatever inside your brain that excrete like hormones and then you get angry about it, you know, like mm -hmm. memories will trigger certain things and then those will, you know, a robot, even with AI, like pure AI, like learning AI, mm -hmm. which I guess we technically have, but that's a different story, wouldn't get angry. Like they wouldn't get angry. They wouldn't be, you know, unless it was programmed as well. And, and then, I mean, what is that really AI? I mean, you could argue that we're programmed too, because, I mean, it's all just little binary bits. Like, oh, is this, do you want to be angry? No, okay, no excretion. Do you want to be angry? Yes, okay, excretion type mm. thing. And it's, it's just a bunch of ones and zeros in our head anyway. But, I mean, you, you put it into, a, into, a, into a, a hard drive, and then all he has to do is learn. You know, like learning to speak, I get that, but learning, like getting angry, seeing like death, like I don't, I don't, I, I don't buy that the robot would have been sad at the death of somebody. Like he would have been like, oh, what should I do when, when somebody dies? And then we tell him, oh, you're actually supposed to be like upset, I guess, about that. But mm. like, it would be more of a learned behavior than a genuine reaction. And nobody teaches Chappie to be angry. Well, there's a lot of things they don't teach him that he picks up. Like, you know, I guess you see off screen maybe, but um, there's a lot of things that he does that like I'm like no you, you, it doesn't work that way that was that was pretty much that was my big peeve throughout the whole thing there's a lot of little bits of that the, the Chappie does that I'm like okay that wouldn't happen or it shouldn't happen I mean I know it's a story I know it's science fiction and I really enjoyed the movie it was just there was where I take big marks away is is just sort of those little science fictiony bits. That just need to be mired a little bit more in fact. And it's not even... I'm, I, I'm a big supporter of movies or, or, or shows that make their own science. And then and you can't... You know, so if you made a, a world where science and magic coexist, I can believe that as long as the characters believe that. Mm. But if the character does something that requires... Like magic now all of a sudden for him doesn't work the same way it does for every other character or he manages to tap into magic in such an unbelievable way that like he merges it with science or whatever. I don't fucking know. But the moment a character doesn't follow the, uh, the rules set in that universe, it sort of bumps me out. So with Chappie, for example, there's a sequence where he looks up and he hasn't even really learned. He, they haven't shown us that he's learned to read, but I'm guessing he knows how to read at this point. But he looks up and he sees a, 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 you know, a banner on the side of the street. What do you call them? Just those big advertisements. Oh, the... Billboards. Billboards. Um, he, he sees it and he goes, and he sees the words, oh, internet, blah, 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 you know, super fast internet. And he's like, oh, what's the internet? And so the gangster who's very eloquent says, oh, it's something in the computer you use to um, learn things. Okay, that's my, that's my South African accent as a South African. <laughs> <laughs> and, <clears throat> and then he's like, Oh, okay. Yeah, no, he wants it because he's at that, he's at that quote unquote age where he's like, he wants everything. He's like three, four years old. He's like, Oh, this is mine. I want it. I want it. You know, and they did a really good job of that too. Cause when they were giving him toys that there was like, that was really, really cute. But then, um, then they ask him, they're like, Oh, Chappie, do you know how to get back home? And he's like, yeah, don't worry. I've got GPS. Firstly, how does he know what GPS is? And how does he know that it's connected to his brain? How does he... You know, like, that, that, that was like an oversight. It was like, all he doesn't know what the internet is, which he would have had a Wi-Fi device plugged into him, I think. Because they, they, they are. I mean, they're busy hacking into the robots later in the movie. They're, they're all connected wirelessly. So he, and, and he does. When he sees a modem, he connects to the internet. Anyway, he just looks at the modem and he connects to it later on in the movie. You know, so it's, it's like, how come he... How does he know what a GPS is at this stage? You know, I mean, it's... Has anybody told him... You know, there's no imp implication for it. And I get it that you don't want to have to sit and explain every little thing to the people. But it's just like in the same scene. What's the internet? Oh, don't worry. I have the GPS. Yeah. You know, I, 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 you can know the two apart from each other. But it's almost, it's really difficult not to know what one is without the other. Because they need it. Well, you know, GPS needs internet, basically. I mean, I know it's a satellite, but whatever. <laughs> um, so, yeah, there's like little things like that throughout the movie that Chappie does that I'm like, okay, I mean... Well, even, please. even even with the characters, even with the human characters, there were a couple of things that, well, one thing that comes off the top of my head, but um, 
But again, spoilers, we'll get to that later. Okay, we'll get to it later. Okay, but <clears throat> other than the little nitpickies, um, I did enjoy the film. I had a lot of fun. Uh, oh, music. It's very heavy, oh, yes. the Antwoord, okay? And it's not Die Antwoord, it's the Antwoord. That's the name it was given by the creators, okay? So that's all you got to learn to do. They say it in all their songs. They're a gangster rap group. They're the Antwoord in the house. It's like, it's just something that they say. I don't know why it's not heard. Everybody loves this band, but nobody hears the bloody lyrics. So, <laughs> um, Tell them what the lyrics mean, Wesley. Oh, uh, the Antwoord means the answer. Oh, I meant like you were telling me the other day. Oh, <laughs> oh when, when, oh, oh, no, there's a lot of lyrics that's just like, no, you asked, there was a, a lyric we were listening to in the movie where it was like something, something in, in this puss or something. And I started laughing. And in Afrikaans, when you say something, yes, a puss means you're a puss. Like, but it doesn't mean pussy, like as in a scared person. When, you, when somebody is a puss, they're, they're basically an arsehole. You're, you're being a dick. You're being a moron. Stop being a puss. You know, stop being an it's, it's one of those things. Um, and I, I laugh because nobody in the theater would laugh. So, <laughs> um, and I saw like all the spray cans on the wall. It was also, um, it was quite silly. Lots of Afrikaans that I was just like, I have no idea what it says, but I'm going to, I'm going to guess it's probably offensive. Well, it happened in the Elysium too. There's the scene where the guy who drives his, who drives like the hovercraft, the military guy, who was actually near Wonka, if I'm not mistaken. I um, can he, see Elysium. Yeah, he, he speaks Afrikaans in the, in the thing and he says some things. I can't remember what it is, but he does say some things. And, and then he starts singing like a little nursery rhyme, uh, Jan Pirovit, which is just, a little about, I don't know what it's actually about. It's a man called Jan who stands around. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and, and seriously, it's like Jan Pirovitz stands still. And then, oh, then something about, uh, doesn't matter. <laughs> um, but yeah, the music is very De Antwoord heavy. If you're a fan of De Antwoord, I guess. And it does make sense. I'm not like, I wasn't put off by it. It was like, because their music is very gangster or gangster heavy, where it's like, you know, like, um, but let me tell you a little history of my experience with the Antwoord when they first made an, their appearance back home. Oh boy. We thought it was a, a joke. Everybody I knew thought it was a joke. There's this band called the, like how people listen to, I guess, Tenacious D, who they are popular, I suppose, but it's joke music. It's, it's like, oh, we're going to take the style of music and then write, or, or um, a better example would be The Lonely Island, you know? They make joke songs, and I guess show it gets popular, but they're jokes. You know, nobody takes it seriously. Nobody's going to put it in a soundtrack for a movie. Mm. And so that's what the Antwoord was. They were just these. They were they were ripping off Zef culture, which Zef back home is is like a, it's like redneck culture in, in the states. Mm. You know, now redneck means something different in South Africa, but when you say redneck in in the states, you know, you mean the yeehaw, got the mullet and fuck your sister type thing. Whereas Zef is pretty much the same thing. We saw the mullets, they, they're, but they're also like mixes a little bit with sort of the gangster culture of, of mm. South Africa. So that's what they were ripping off. That's what they were singing songs about. Turns out they were being quite serious. So while we're all sitting and listening to this music and laughing because it's ridiculous in the same way I would listen to Lonely Island or, or um, Tenacious D, turns out I'm supporting these people that really actually believe this. And, if, and then I saw this documentary about them where there was this really funny joke, I thought, where the guys like um, the, the interviewer like asks them, so what does the antwoord mean? And the ninja, the lead singer, turns to the camera and goes, the answer? Like it's the dumbest question you've ever heard. <laughs> but obviously that's not what the interviewer is asking. It's like, what does the why did you choose the name the antwoord for your band? Why are you guys the answer? And then he looks at him, it's like, what are you a moron? It means the answer. Why how is that difficult to understand? And so I thought that was really clever. I thought, like, because there's a lot of Zef videos coming out. There's this Suzelle's DIY on YouTube, oh, which is yeah. really, really funny. And that's, like, Zef culture. Like, they, they, they get into that South African culture and just sort of make fun of it. And I love it. And I, that's what I thought they were doing. Hey, I love Suzelle, and I'm not even South African. Yeah, yeah, but she's at she's least funny. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Whereas with, uh, yeah, with, with uh, this... The Antwoord? The, the Antwoord, it was like... Yeah, then they made their second album. Their second album was actually quite serious. It wasn't, it wasn't, and I didn't like their second album at all. It wasn't funny at all. And yeah, so it turns out, but look, that all being said, their live show is amazing. Hmm. They are amazing live. Like, I would, I would go <clears throat> watch a The Antwoord show as long as I know that they're going to do what they do back home. And that's, like, they, they, they do this thing where, um, there's a song called Pustrong, which means just 
puss drunk. I, I, again, see, puss just gets used in such weird ways. Um, it just means like, really fucking drunk, like blackout drunk. And kind of like you. Or duesterong, sorry, duesterong. And duest is also another acronym for vagina. But duest, you can also, when you refer to somebody as a duest, you're calling like them. Fuck, you gotta be in a South Africa to understand these things. <laughs> when you're calling somebody a duos, it's a really horrible... It's like saying cunt. Okay. I don't know if I'm gonna have to censor this. But it's like saying the C word. <laughs> um, and nobody likes that word. And in, But in South Africa, duos does the same thing. It's like, whoa, you don't want to say that word. That's a bad word, you know? Um. But so when you say duos drunk, you're just saying you're drunk. Like... It's a fucking... I don't know. I have to explain so much is history like, behind the same is it word. Like, is it like the difference between bollocks and the dog's bollocks? Uh, sure. I mean, sure. It, it's just, it just means you're really so drunk that you're having a party and you're, you're going to black out. You're not really going to probably remember it. Anyway, the song goes crazy. And what they usually do is they bring in vocalists and musicians from other bands. Hmm. To, uh, so, like, the Armfits playing and it's usually... The, well, it used to be their last song. I don't know if they do this anymore. And they, they would be, like, rocking and then, like... Um, a folk of police cars a singer would come on and he would sing with them and then he would add like a chorus and then man whoever it was uh, like just different bands would all get up on stage and then it gets louder and crazier and the crowd goes insane and just thinking about it gives me goosebumps because it's so much fucking fun and i love that they they know how to they know how to work a crowd they're they're definitely entertainers that being said i don't like their second album <laughs> onwards um yeah so if you like their music you won't be put off. If you don't like their music, you might get a little bit put off. Um, but, yeah, it's it's all very electronica. Electronica gangster rap, I guess. I didn't even know who they were. Yeah, that's fine. You you were better off not knowing. Yeah. <laughs> In my opinion. Not my favorite South African band. Every time I come here, it's like, like whenever I tell people, a lot of musician or music-loving fans here, they're like, oh, do you know Die Antwoord or Die Antwoord? And I'm like, you know, what do you mean Die Antwoord? But... <laughs> we'll take that whole Costello act out and be like, I'm like, no, they're not really my favorite band from back home. If you want to hear some good music, here's a list. And then I would list like things like bands that don't no, no longer exist, like Marlo, which is, oh man, that band was so good. They should have lost it, but they didn't. Um, Boo, I think they're still going, and Chris Chameleon. Though, like, Chris Chameleon sings, he's the vocalist of Boo, and then he went on his solo project. Uh, the Narrow, pretty decent. Um, not My Dog. There's so many other good bands, and then the Antwoord has to represent us. And I'm like, so sad. I mean, I guess it's like, probably the Germans feel the same about Rammstein. Nah. Where they're like, there's like all this other great German music and then there's Du hast, Du hast mich, Du hast mich, like whatever. And I'm like, okay, well, good for you Germans. I didn't like Rammstein at all. Like when, I'm like, okay. I know people who are actually, uh, you know, if you've ever seen Breaking Bad, you know it takes place in New Mexico. I know a few people who, uh, well, I have one in particular that comes to mind. I know, I know someone who just hates the fact that of all the shows that had to represent New Mexico, it had to be Breaking Bad, and now everyone thinks we're this, like, Drug. meth heavy. <laughs> and it's like, I don't know, Mom. I mean, it's it's not untrue. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I guess. It's like, what, what represents you? I mean, I'm sure the Canadians, I mean, if, uh, if we talk about it all the time with you know, some friends, where just different representations happen, mm. and it's not fair, and I get it, it sucks, but what can you do? Mm, you just kind of say, eh, well, I know, like, I mean, for, I mean, I know Breaking Bad is a little bit ridiculous, but I also know that a lot of people, when they think of New Mexico, they think of Roswell and aliens, well, and that's I, always my thoughts. Yeah, so Even that, after Breaking Bad, it was always aliens to me. <laughs> yeah, so, I but, don't know. Whatever. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So you know, to to wrap up, sort of the first thoughts. Um, no, I don't think it deserves the thirty percent critic rating. I think. I I, I mean I didn't read the fine the whole you know the, the I just saw the thirty percent. I don't think it deserves thirty percent. Um, it definitely suffers from again a lot of plot holes. A lot of it needs a lot of story. The story needed polishing. Mm. It's a great story with. It just needed. Yeah. It just needed. To get nipped and tucked in here and there and just fix like it, it needed, needed it needed another pass from another writer you know not maybe yeah. the same writer yeah it needed <clears throat> it needed to cross its t's and dot its i's mm -hmm. and, and tighten it, some bolts yeah <laughs> and um, oh I made a pun I didn't even realize <laughs> oh I thought you did all <laughs> yeah so it was um, visually stunning very beautiful movie um, audio wise. Uh, Man, you know what? The sound was great. Mm. I didn't. My ears never hurt. There was none of that. That weird, like just like there were a lot of explosions and stuff. 
but it never it never felt uncomfortable um you know like but that's probably more the movie theater than the movie mm. but yeah no like the sound sound was good you know the rob the robots i mean the character wise the, um Chappy, Chap, he's a robot with no face, really. Like, he's got the most bare bones expressions, and they, they do so much with him. Mm -hmm. I mean, even if they took the rest of the shit out and they just really had this adventure of a robot, if DreamWorks or Disney did that, you know, like, oh, watch this little robot, this animated robot, I guarantee you that would have gotten so much praise for it. Like, I think they're missing that, that, well, that watching the robot was. learn. Well, that's kind of what Wally was. He well, didn't Wally have. He was empathetic from the get go. Yeah, but, I mean, like, he didn't have a face. He had eyes. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, the same. No. You know, so, yeah, and, yeah. I mean, if you watch Wally again, it's, uh, it's basically the first half of the movie. There is no dialogue. There is Wally. Mm -hmm. Eva. Yeah, and, but, but, is it, but, I mean, I don't think, they, they don't really speak until the humans come in, right? Yeah. So, I mean, between he and he and Eva, like, the two of them, it's the inflection of the, of the speech. You know, like, Wally? Like, he's like, question mark at the end there, yeah you know and and obviously contextually it's it's like like should i take this mm -hmm. or should i where are you going you know it's it's but i mean most of most of it was done with the expression of the eyes because they didn't have a mouth mm -hmm. uh and the body language so i mean and 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 that's what i think this movie does quite successfully is the body mm -hmm. language is really important for yeah. the robot yeah yeah, I'm 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 more with the general audience on this. Uh, sixty percent, sixty to seventy percent. So I'd give it like a six point five out of ten. Um, I think that's fair considering the plot holes, and considering that really it's a retelling of a bunch of stories we've seen before without too much added to it. But it's not like if you had never seen those stories before, it tells a really good story. It's a very good allegory for intelligence um, and how we treat intelligent beings mm -hmm. because I do believe when robots we do bring AI into the world we're going to have a bunch of people um, who mistreat them yeah you know and sure they can't feel pain but I wouldn't I would not put it past us some humans at least to program pain into the robot <laughs> just so they could beat it and hurt it and make it go ow, 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 or whatever you know even though technically it wouldn't really be feeling anything but it would be responding like that and the intelligence is made to feel the pain. It's really so fucking difficult to sort of comprehend. I was also part of the Nine fandom for uh, a few years, actually, and I don't remember the artist's name off the top of my head, but I remember there was one artist who drew this picture of Nine. If if you haven't seen it, it's the little it's the little movie uh, with the little burlap sack people and this post apocalyptic world. And someone drew a picture, and this was a really good thing to point out. But they're up in the movie, Nine, like, gets a scene popped off so you can see his, like, little shoulder socket from mm -hmm. his little burlap sack. And he, like, actually motions like he's in pain. And so somebody drew Nine and he's holding his shoulder and screams, Why was I programmed to feel pain? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's pretty much, I mean, that that's, you know, I mean, it, it seems like a design flaw. But, I mean, at the same time, I guess you do need pain to... Uh, for self-preservation, yeah. you know, look, if you you don't want to touch the hot plate, for example, <laughs> after the first time you've learned. Anyway, yeah, that's my score. Uh, I don't know how about you. I'd give it an eight, actually. Okay. But again, eight. we yeah. as we as we've discussed before, we grew up with different um, uh, different grading systems in school. <laughs> so eight, like a uh, eighty percent, is like a B. Holy shit! Yeah. Not today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So um, I'd, I'd give it a B. Yeah. So essentially, I, I'd say like, yeah. Again, for me, for me, it was mostly the nitpicky stuff, and I don't know half as much about science as you do. So I, I like I. You're being I, very generous. I know science by reading articles, not by studying it. Yeah. Well, I mean, still you like to tell me about sciencey things and I'm not really as well I'll tell you about everything scary in the ocean and yeah. that always freaks you out well ocean is scary <laughs> I, I just recently space is awesome because there's nothing dirty up there just nothing stupid designed I recently discovered there's a giant manta ray I recently discovered there's a giant manta ray that lives in the ocean it's like what I... like 9 meters long or something yeah, it's like 30 feet long fuck 
And I show this to Wesley because I'm like, wow, look at this thing. Oh, it's so big. I love manta rays. Look at how amazing and beautiful this thing is. And you're like, nope. Yeah, nope.jpg. Leave. Uh, <laughs> get on my jetpack and just fly it. It's like the first time I ever showed you a goblin shark. Oh, those things are ugly. Those things are horrible. I think they're really interesting. I mean, no. Nature and evolution <laughs> forgot about that thing, and that's what should have stayed that way. No, we, we should go to the bottom of the ocean and fuck around. No. <laughs> We're up here. We look pretty. Let's just... I mean, I'm sure we look ugly to them, but... Yeah, yeah. So, anyway. So, uh, shall we... 8 out of 10. Okay, so, that's our ratings. We're going to go into spoiler territory now. I guess we're going to break down scenes of the movie. Yeah. Um, and then try and remember exactly what happens. Uh, but yeah, if you don't want to listen no more, turn off right now. But uh, we should probably give like email addresses and stuff at this point. Oh we'll yeah. We'll probably do that in future episodes. Okay. <clears throat> right, so, movie starts off, um, again, very, uh, like, this is where I was like, oh, this is like Detroit and Robocop, where it's like, oh, the, the city is in the midst of terrible crimes, oh, we're all gonna die because of the crime rate, it's so horrible. <laughs> <laughs> Which it is. In Johannesburg, the crime rate is pretty outrageous. Gauteng in general. In fact, there's a joke back home. Gauteng is an anagram for get a gun. <laughs> uh, Gauteng is, is the province uh, where, or a state, but a province where uh, South Africa has, has, and uh, inside is Johannesburg, uh, Pretoria, Centurion. A whole bunch of other places. Anyway, Johannesburg is, 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 and it's the mother, not the mother city, it's the capital city. The mother city, I believe, is Cape Town because that's the first city. But I've heard people refer to Pretoria as the mother city. It's really weird. Pretoria is actually the capital. Johannesburg is the business capital. Sorry about getting that confused. Pretoria is the capital. Don't worry about the rest. <laughs> Johannesburg, but Johannesburg and Gauteng in general is quite known for its massive crime rates, a lot of violent crimes happening. And they do that. They've got that, um, you know, like, as the camera pans over the city, you got the voiceover of the um, news reports. Oh no, South Africa and Johannesburg got the most violent crime rate in all the world, and blah, blah, blah. <laughs> and, I mean, it's pretty up there. I think we're, like, in the top ten. I can't quite remember the exact number. But, yeah, so it introduces like that, and then they it, and it introduces quickly, like, okay, look, we've needed new police force, the human police force on cutting it. Um, because they're just getting killed too easily mm. because there's because the the guns that they get like are you know assault rifles and everything and <clears throat> and uh yeah and then they they develop like this guy dion invents a which is a common south african name um no kidding yeah and it's also the name of a superstore um i don't think it actually exists anymore it used to be it used to be a furniture warehouse oh really Dion's, yeah. i've got a cousin named dion and and he's a really cute kid. He's actually, okay, so, uh, he's like, he's like part white, part Hispanic, part black. He is a very, very cute little kid mm -hmm. and he's very active. Uh, he's my, he's my second cousin. So he's my, he's the son of my cousin. And there's also a rest, there's a pizza chain, which if I ever actually, when I take you back to New Mexico, we have to eat there because okay. it's like it's like an it's like a New Mexican thing. You have to eat pizza at Dion's. Okay, well, excuse me. <laughs> so, <clears throat> yeah, so Dion uh, goes along and <sighs> he's been uh, he was the one who created the robots and the and the um and the the AI that accompanies them. It's not really AI; it's still a VI, I guess, and. You know, he, he creates the program that these robots run by, he creates the robots, um, and then they, and then you get introduced to this other guy sort of in the rundown who created, like, think think the other robot in Robocop, and if you haven't seen it, it's just like a giant mech warrior robo, ro mm. robot, and it's got, like, a claw, and a Gatling gun, and it's just really, really big, and but it's human controlled, you know, the humans would be, so it's an unmanned robot, I guess, um, and I really could see something like this being developed, but it's a giant tank. And it's pretty much overkill, as they do establish in the movie. And, uh, yeah, so, so Dion invents these robots that, that take over this guy's funding, and he obviously gets jealous, so to set up the antagonist and the protagonist. And it's all a thing now. Mm -hmm. uh, I like that intro. Um, I believe there was some Dion Foot music playing during that, too. I can't really remember. But I did like the intro. It, it set up a world that needed robotic law enforcement again. Yeah. You know, and so... 
Now, where it differs with Robocop is Robocop, I think, speaks more about the humanity and being taken over by the, the robot side, because um, in Chappie, it's more the growth of the the artificial intelligence in, you know, the little robots eventually. Mm-hmm. But, the, but, the, but the security force itself, like, there, there's no... They're really just little machines. They're machines who just that's what they are they're like i mean there's many times where the swat teams were i couldn't know what we call our swat teams but they're not the same they're not called swat but they just hold on behind the robot while it's getting shot at and then you know they just move on yeah um so yeah yeah it there was it was just sort of like the setting up of a, of a city in surrounded by crime um it just, yeah it just felt very robocop to me yeah um okay and then and then uh then we we get a I mean we it, it, and then after that they uh, introduce essentially the like because they all have numbers right mm-hmm. so there's number twenty two, who which gets, I wonder if that if that means anything because it just means robot number twenty two. But yeah, I don't know if it means anything to Neil Blomkamp in general. Anyway, yeah, sorry. Mm. Anyway, so uh, yeah, we see that this ro- one robot gets his little ear antenna shot off so now he's replaced with this little orange one which is like you know oh hello we found our main robot yeah because i mean obviously. <laughs> but, but it's also like oh we don't really care what they look like it's just now just slap on a new antenna it's like an orange antenna yeah versus his previous one which was brown and or black it was and blue. blue and the rest of his body is is blue it's that tint of blue mm-hmm. um and then they immediately stop putting like there's like always stickers going on this poor thing yeah, yeah. um yeah, so Chappie, the robot, the chassis, number 22, gets introduced. Mm-hmm. And yeah, as you said, it's pretty much now, okay, this is what we're going to use for the main character. Mm-hmm. Um, gets sent out again immediately back into combat. Yeah. Um, and off they go, they fight some criminals. And this is where you meet, um, I guess, the main gangster criminals, who is played by Dion Fort. Mm-hmm. Except for DJ Owen. They, in the beginning, they had there were three of them. It was Ninja Yolandi, or Yolandi. And, um, the, I think, what was his name? It was DJ Epic or something like that. Um, it was, it was the worst name. And, like, and again, this is why you think it was a parody band, because it was like, look at this shitty name we can come up with. <laughs> um, yes, DJ Epic. And then he disappeared. And then apparently he died. But I think, I, again, I thought that was a joke. I don't know with this band anymore. I don't know what was jokes and what wasn't. <laughs> you know, because it was like, he went into the field to learn more about DJing and then he died. And then it's like, turned out he was dead, but then I don't know if he is. I don't know. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> yes. But yes, they're the gangsters of this film. And this is a point I brought up with Emily. Even a movie set in South Africa where the dominant population is black by 93%, your main bad guys are white. Um, even even the, the, the bad guy to the bad guys, you know, to, the, to these guys, were like, you know, the guy who was demanding the 20 million... Rand, so that's like 2 million US. Um, even the guy who was asking for the 20 million Rand, he was like, I know he was supposed to be black, but he was so white. Like, he was, like, he just looked like a tanned white guy, <laughs> like with dreadlocks. And I'm like, okay. And then the, the main, the, 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 then the, the, the other bad guy, the, 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 uh, the antagonist from the AI place, or the place that makes the robots, he was white. Mm. Um, but he was like South African boot, angry white man thing, so that's gonna always be there. And then the main character, Dion, the main character other than Chappie, was, he was a mixed color. Like, we, no, we, like, I've always had to correct myself on this, when, when we refer, when South Africans refer to colors, we don't mean black people. Mm-hmm. You know, like, and, and it's not a derogatory sense, they're colors, they're the mix, they're the white and black people. The, the mom's white, the dad's black, or whatever, and... Oh, I thought it was Indian. Uh, cause... No, I believe, I believe he's a... Uh, is he Indian? He looked Indian to me. No, no, they, 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 the coloreds quote and quote like they, that's, they quote that, 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 that skin tone to them. Well, I, I also didn't grow up in South Africa, <laughs> so like... I mean, know, I, I could like, be mistaken, but I'm pretty sure he was a, he was a colored. The, we, we don't have many, we don't have many, uh, black people in, in, uh... Yeah, in the in states Mexi- altogether, I believe it's like well, especially in 3% New Mexico. All over. Well, especially in New Mexico, because I mean, you get you get pockets of them, especially on the on the east side. But where I'm from, we have mostly uh, mostly Hispanics, especially of Mexican heritage. So mm. if you're if you're mixed, more than likely you are part white, part Hispanic, or part 
uh, and or part Native American. Well, like Trevor Noah. But he looked a lot like Trevor Noah, right? Oh, okay. So Trevor Noah is next. Oh, okay. Um, well, yeah. So, I mean, in there, I mean, that's a... Again, he was... He was mixed. Um, and even if he wasn't, he wasn't black. Even if he was Indian, he was black. Mm. And it's like, it's such a weird thing. Because, I mean, the only black person of power in that was the chief of police who was way too skinny to be the chief of police. <laughs> If I really should I get like a blog work and stop putting pictures up for things I mean. <laughs> South African chief of police is a fat guy. At least last I saw. Maybe they changed him. <laughs> um, yeah, and yeah, so yeah. Um, how do we get onto that topic of, of that? Uh, we were discussing the film, the plot of the movie. Well, I, well, well basically, um, yeah, okay, we got introduced to the, the villains, I guess, the Dion who are pretty much also main characters in the story. Um, they're busy running away from these other criminals, the police are making a raid, and, um, yeah, then, again, yeah. number 22 gets hit by, I mean, they're doing a really good raid, um, even though, you, I don't know, man, that, that, the, the main bad guy from the, who wanted the 20 million, he could dodge fire power, like, <laughs> stormtrooper level, like, he, nothing could hit him. You know, he was like Skywalker and those robots with the stormtroopers. But the, the robots could hit everything else, just not him. And he's like, I'm going to dodge these bullets. I'm like, okay. Even when the big robot came in, and that thing had like super targeting systems. Yeah. It was like pinpointing dudes from the other side of the map. And then it's like, no, I just mm, dodge. Like, okay, whatever. And the bullets are like huge. They're not like tiny 9 millimeters. They're like 35 millimeters. <laughs> anyway, so... Um... Yeah, uh, he grabs a rocket launcher, shoots number 22 again, uh, 22's battery gets, yeah, 22 gets taken back to the, to the thing. Yeah, to the, it is. Now they, now they can't change his battery. Yeah, yeah, because his it, battery gets fused to his pack, so there's no point in even recovering him, they're going to send him to the scrap heap. Mm -hmm. um, Dion then goes home, it's the end of the day for him, and then he sits down, he's like, no, today he's going to work on his AI program, and he wants to finish it up, and... They go through the thing. Oh, he's, and his house is filled with like a little robot. Yeah. And it's funny, this is set in 2016. This is like set in next year. It's like <laughs> really like expecting much like, within a year of South Africa's. Because, yeah. Anyway, so he's coding and then he creates the, the AI. Yeah. You know, after a lot of testing, he creates the artificial intelligence. Mm -hmm. um, gets excited about it, tries to pitch it to the, to the weapons company. He's not so. Oh, even, even doing the thing where. Um, during the intro, they introduce him in, in like an interview, and they're like, "Oh, well then, you created this operating system. You should be really, really proud." And he's like, "Yes, what I'm actually really interested in is true artificial intelligence—a robot that can think and feel." And um, the the interviewer is like, "Oh, is that in correlation with what Tetraval wants?" And then, and this is where I thought like this guy I felt was a good actor was well, you could see in his face like, "Ah, oh, fuck, I guess not." Uh... You know, it's like uh, they, they wouldn't they wouldn't give me the money to do it, but he still goes and tries to pitch it. And Sigourney Weaver's character, the owner of Tetraval, which is a interesting name for the for the business because Tetra, I guess, is just like a sign of multi elements. And then Val is is like there's an area in South Africa called Val, and there's a Val River, which is one of our biggest, more, more well known rivers. Um, so it was cool that they actually named the company. And we have, you know, I mean, you have companies here like named after. Oh, let's go to the Granville Emporium or whatever. So, you know, it's, it's, it's pretty much something along that line. Um, yeah, so uh, he creates his AI, he pitches it, she's not interested. Yeah. Because it's like, I don't want an art of... And it's, it's like, it's so crazy to me um, that he didn't take it elsewhere. Like, to do what he did also, this is this is the first step where I'm like, okay, I get that you're, like, desperate to to do the thing that you want to do. Mm -hmm. He basically steals the, the, because he couldn't get permission to get the scrap heap. Um, yeah, because he actually, yeah, because he even says to uh, Sigourney Weaver's character, like, look, you don't have to pay for anything. There was a robot that was going to be sent to the scrap heap anyway. I'll just take that one. It doesn't cost you anything. And she's like, no, 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 you know how the, the insurances. insurances is when, you know, I remember working retail, you know, people would open up, up packages and stuff. And it's like, hey, look, it's perfectly fine. You mind if I take it? I'll even pay a little bit for it. And they're like, nope, sorry, can't do it because freaking business. Yeah, it's it's pretty much, I mean, it's not, it's, it's like, this is one comedian recently I watched who was like, the reason why we can't have fun things is because there's that one person who fucks it up for everybody else. 
We could all drive fast on the roads, but because one moron got drunk and crashed and killed himself, the rest of us have to follow the rules. Yeah. You know? And, and then he brings it all the way back to guns. Because there is that one fucking idiot out there who decides he wants to go shoot up a school, we can't have guns. Like, except it's just, in the States. Except in the, but that's the, that's the general attitude. It's because one person fucks it up for everybody else. Yeah. So when it comes to retail stuff, it's basically probably what happened is somebody got an open bag took it home, brought it back, and he's like, you sold me an open bag. I want this one back. And it's like, <sighs> fine, you know, because in, in, instead of, like, the, the mutual compliance of, like, it, it's, it's there's always somebody trying to f- score a free meal. Yeah. You know, and, and screw everybody else over. And fuck everybody else, because I got... And I see that mentality everywhere. It's like, you know, like, the, there's the difference between the mentality of um, think outside the box versus just fucking people around and there's such a clear difference you know it's like no i don't want to follow the rules but if you don't follow the rules you're gonna cost me a lot of money yeah. no i don't want to follow them because i think outside the box well you've cost me a million dollars i'm not going to let anybody ever do that again why do you put so much restriction oh because that moron fucked everything <laughs> up. um i told you a story where along these lines um i know somebody back home who um when he loans money to his staff um and I, I've told you who it is, but I don't want to mention any names on the show. No. But when he loans money to his staff, and then he takes it off their paycheck at the end of the week, and with a little bit of interest, mm-hmm. just to sort of discourage them from loaning money. And um, especially from loan sharks, because they'll take your legs. Oh. And so what happens is, um, sometimes those guys will then report my uh, this guy to um, like unions or whatever, and then he gets in trouble. Mm-hmm. So then he stops doing it. And then when other people come to ask him to loan money, they're like, oh, but why can't we loan some money and he's like no i don't do that anymore and he's like no why not he's like oh because that guy by name tells him it's like that guy reported me last time Oops. so this guy doesn't do anything illegal but just all of a sudden that other guy's in hospital because he got beaten the shit out of <laughs> or not necessarily always in hospital but he gets beaten up mm-hmm. um and then it's like oh okay well now you're not going to report anymore because we want to loan the money it's like okay here you go and that guy starts loaning money out again until it happens again then he stops loaning money and then those guys so it sort of takes care of itself which is a thing but i mean we can't go and beat the shit out of that one person who crashed and killed himself but you, you get the general yeah. gist of it but uh, and i think it all should also be because see that's how south africa works ladies and gentlemen so this <laughs> movie has a little bit of <laughs> oh boy well i think the other thing too is because uh, Tetraval would be a government-run facility, right? Like, Pro- uh, it's very tricky with South Africa. Um, it'd probably really? be privately owned. Yeah. Okay, because like in the states. Because remember, the police were buying it. If it was government-controlled, then the police would just get the robots. Oh, well, okay, so. Because they would be be paying, be they they get like money from the government, a percentage um, of the money would from taxes would go. But because the money in South Africa is too busy being spent on mansions for our president um we pre- president in the biggest quote marks you can find um <laughs> i'm gonna get into trouble <laughs> um, <laughs> um but yeah he um yeah if, if it was a government-run system it, taxes would have been used to buy the robots whereas it's privately controlled and they like the police came to them and they were like oh look i mean you guys are in the states too we're like look we're pitching this new anti swat team device thing and then the police would then be okay we'll put in a bid for it type of thing okay cuz i was just going to say like i i could understand if tetraval was like a government company but if it's but like cause another I- reason why it wasn't a government company is cuz there weren't enough black people working in there ah uh, <laughs> <laughs> yay b black empowerment <laughs> thingy what was the name of that program black employment in- equity shit i can't remember <laughs> i haven't been home in so long i forgot all the bullshit that's happening down there. <laughs> not saying equal opportunity isn't a good thing that's definitely necessary for anybody or any country but the way that they south africa does it it's it's almost it's very corrupt um <laughs> you it's not it's not the poor getting into positions of of government work it's I'm the president, my family is going to go into these positions of government work. I'm a governor, or my family is going to go into these positions of power. I'm the mayor, or my family is all of a sudden my cabinet. You know, it's... it's Weird. There, there's a name for this. I, I don't want to say it's Zionistic, but there's another name for it. It's where you keep everything within sort of like a, a, a family or close friends thing. Almost an aristocratic kind of... Yeah. Oligarchy! <laughs> Sorry, that's a joke from a thousand years ago. <laughs> <laughs> um... <laughs> Uh, where were we? <laughs> okay, um, yeah, so Dion creates the AI, brings it to Sigourney Weaver, 
who loves being in, in, in Neil Blomkamp movies, it seems. <laughs> she was in Elysium too. I don't know if she was in District 9, I don't remember. But yeah, so um, he steals the, the, the broken down relics, which now has like extra stickers on it. Like there's a sticker on its forehead that says reject, yeah. which I thought was a nice little touch because of obviously what's to come. Yeah. And I mean, this is what I like about Neil Blomkamp is sort of, he, he gives like these nice little characteristics. I mean, the aliens in District 9... I um, mean, the, the main alien that, that follows him around, um, like, it, it was very, it stood out, you know, like, even, it was, even though it was human almost in its actions, um, you know, like the way it felt, you could see it felt about things, it, it, it um, you know, he, it, it was, a, it was, a, it was a soldier, you know, you could see it was a soldier, and it, like, and it cared about sort of doing good, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't like, it wasn't the other. And the same thing happened with the robot. The, the robot wasn't the other. The robot was you and me and everybody. Yeah. You know, like, putting put into that situation, um, I guess, if you grew up in five days. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, so the robot um, gets the robot, installs the... Uh, oh, it gets hijacked because um, the the Antwerp gangsters want to kidnap him so they can teach him how to turn off the robot so they can go and steal, tw- yeah. like, 500 million at like, this transit. Yeah, and it's really kind of sad how it happens, too, because I, I think about, I thought about that in the movie, where if, like, if he didn't steal the robot, maybe he would have been saved from the height, from the... the no, he would have he been shot, though. You think so? Because, like, remember when he was, like, already trying to, like, defend uh, his position, he's like, you can't, you can't turn them off, and they were already getting really, really willing to shoot him. Yeah. So, yeah, they they, 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 they steal him, they, they kidnap him, they find that he's got a robot in the back, he, he plugs it in, he turns it on, and immediately... The, the operating system is replaced with this new one that he's created, and mm-hmm. so the, the the little creature like runs away and like falls over and like hides in a hole, you know, like a little animal, I guess. Like think think of it like a, like a deer or something would be very skittish and hides away. And the only person out of the three um, out of the three gangsters, Yolandi, I guess, showing off motherly intent, actually is like, oh, I see, it's a little baby. We have to nurture it, and she immediately picks up on that. Yeah. Now, even though she, like it's obvious these gangsters don't have education because when Dion talks to them. They don't understand him half the time. You know, they're like, what the hell are you talking about? Just talk normal. And, and you know, she tries to understand him, but she's like, no, do you mean like this? Mm-hmm. You know, she does a lot of like, do you mean like this? Like, to break it down for her. And then she adopts Chappie, and she calls him Chappie. Yeah. Um, she says, oh, you're a happy Chappie, because he gets an item or something. Was it the chicken? It was, yeah, it was either the chicken or the watch, because his first words are watch. Yeah, 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 he gets the watch from Dion, and then Dion gives him the chicken. And then, then the then the robot's like, oh, you know, all happy, does little dances about it. <laughs> and then um, Yolandi calls him a happy chappy, which is a saying back home. It's like when you're a happy chappy, you're just generally happy. <laughs> and then I thought I thought the robot was named after the gum that we have back home, chappy gum, which probably the saying happy chappy comes from that because it just rhymes and chappy's gum has been around for ages. Oh. Um, but it's like gum that like when you open it, you it's a little square piece of gum you chew it, and then inside the wrapper is like little information or little facts kind of like how you guys have in your snapple cans at the bottom oh, you know really? so it's like yeah so there's like did you know the eiffel tower weighs this much and did you know the sun is this far from the earth um just like a bunch of little random tidbits cute um and so you buy like a, a whole bunch of them and then you're like and you just look at all these stupid little facts <laughs> and then you tell your friends and they're like yes we read chappy t- <laughs> chappy facts too <laughs> so um she calls him a happy chappy and then she's like that's your name chappy and then deal's like no 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 and then he's like, and he points at himself, he's like, Chappie, and he calls himself Chappie, because at this stage he's starting to point at things and he realizes pointing at something. So he, he learns, he learns a, a lot faster rate than humans do. Mm-hmm. Um, like Dion said, he learns, uh, what was it, like five times, uh, there was a crazy number of 50 times faster. It was, but the, uh, Chappie basically grows up like within three to four days. Yeah. Like. He, he learns, the, you learn from Dion talking while he's busy activating Chappie that his battery will only last for about five days, mm-hmm. approximately, which annoys um, Ninja from the Antwerp. Ninja's the main, you know, bad guy. Ninja Yolandi and America. Um, <laughs> and and so, um, so Dion has to leave because I can't, yeah, I guess he just said, they just forced him out. And he's like, oh, but you gotta let me come back so I can teach him stuff. Mm-hmm. And um, so while they're there, um, at this stage, Ninja is still very much on the mindset that Chappie is a a robot. He's supposed to be a robot. He's supposed to be able to pick up guns and shoot guns. And that's what these robots did because it's a police robot. Everybody recognizes it as a police bot. Mm-hmm. And um, so Ninja is like getting angry that this robot is just so useless. And, you know, like, again, almost, and this is where it like sets up this little family market. And I, and I liked it. Like, 
Yolani being very protective of the child, her son, quote unquote, and then the, the dad, almost an adoptive dad, like just not understanding how to cope with this device that's not doing what it's supposed to do. And a lot of people treat children like that. Yeah. You know? And I was like, okay, that's that's a really interesting way of of of, of doing that family dynamic, you know, rather than just immediately, oh, let's try and teach a thing. Because then he does. He starts teaching at things because, again, he thinks it's just a program. It's just a robot. He doesn't see it as a human yet. And, and I felt like America was sort of the, the, the in-between of them where, you know, whenever he's with Yolandi, he's like, you know, he's more about like, you know, just sits back. He's like the uncle, essentially. Mm -hmm. He's like the uncle that teaches it bad words. <laughs> which he did. <laughs> which he does. Yeah. Teaches him bad words and how to be, like, how to pose like a gangster. Teaches him swear words and things. I thought that was really cute in the movie where even, like... Even toward the end where you see him do that little, like, nose yeah. flick that he does. Yeah, he learns from America, like, to do this nose flick, and he keeps it throughout the film. It becomes his little, it's like, and he's never really sure, but it's like a little gangster, sort of, like, a little nose flick. <laughs> so. And that was done really well. I mean, it gives, it starts giving, you start giving Chucky these little, little tidbits. And, and again, this is, like, why I don't understand the low rating, because there's so many little allegories in this, in this. There's, there's a family allegory, there's intelligence, you know, like, when we do create artificial intelligence, how are we going to treat them? You know, um, because, I mean, we're already, like, I mean, I think we started last year, we've already started creating robot laws. Mm. Um, not for the robots, for how we treat robots, like robot rights. No kidding. We have to, we're doing it now, so it's like, so when the robots come along, and we're like, okay, I know one of the rules is you can't hurt the thing. You can't program it to feel pain. Mm. The idea is not be for the robot security, it's for us. Because if we become fucking masochists like that it's 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 it just ruins mankind <laughs> um you know it, it's just basically the rules for to treat the robot's intelligence is the same rules the robot rights would be, in fact robots would probably have better rights than animals will at that point <laughs> but um yeah so um they start learning like little things like swear words and things from from these gangsters and they're all laughing because now a police robot is swearing yeah and they think it's really funny and then dion comes along comes back the next day and um a chappy swears at him and whatever like he's like oh you puss mother and it's like where did you learn that chappy and he's like oh they taught me or whatever and he's like no 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 you can't say things like that and this is where um dion like sort of establishes like no you, you it teaches him how to promise and teaches him that crimes are bad mm -hmm. and and again like so so chappy learns this at a quote like at, at his i guess young age between the ages of say three and ten yeah that's his sort of age. like i mean because Dion's like learning, he's like, oh, in three months, the baby will start mimicking you what you're saying. Yeah. And that's what does kind of happen. But by the time Dion gets back, Chappie's pretty much already, say, five years old, mm -hmm. you know, in, 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 in human time. And he's like, he's like already learning. He knows how to talk. He almost knows how to read. Um, but I think this is where um, Dion starts giving him things. You know, he's like, oh, here's a little book. And then Chappie gets excited and he wants it. Like, this is what I was saying. He's like, oh, this is, this is mine. This is Chappie's. And, and then and then he gives him something. He's like, "Oh, this I want it. Give it to me. Give it to me." You know, like like uh, like a kid. Yeah. And like, I, I, why can't you appreciate that? Because it's like, you didn't have to do that. Like, that's such a nice little detail. It's mm -hmm. like I could have just been like, "Oh, here's a book for you to read. I'm happy days." Or like, you know, or connect to the internet and learn everything like you did like at the end of the movie. <laughs> but no, it's like here, like oh, I wanted like a little kid learning, and, and I really appreciated um, that development of character for for Chappie. Yeah. Um, Teaching Chappie to paint, teaching Chappie to, um, to be, you know, to express himself. Um, I thought, I thought, uh, it should also be mentioned too that Dion, like the second day that he comes back also says to Chappie that you should, you know, you, you shouldn't let these people, uh, uh, dictate what you do. You should, you know, you should think for yourself, which mm -hmm. does come back to bite him a little bit. You know, because as far as Dion was concerned, Chappie was inherently good. Yeah. So. Well, supposedly, because, I mean, there's there's a, I, and I don't know if this was Blomkamp's intention, but there's a belief, I think it's called tabula, tab, tabula rasa or something like that. It basically means clean slate. Mm. And there's, it's the belief that all human babies are born nothing. There's like no, like you see like with animals, like when a, when a deer is born, it's born, it knows how to run, it knows how to to hide, it knows how to eat, it knows how to do all those things. Human babies, we don't know how to do none of that. So you can still change and adapt that person by teaching it certain things. Mm. Um, and then you could then make it good or evil by what we assume, by what we dictate is good and evil. So Chappie can, Chappie does that. Um, and I think that's what Dion wanted. He thought like, oh, because he doesn't know evil, he is thus good. Yeah. 
And whereas the, the gangsters, the Antwerp gangsters, they were, because of their lifestyle that they had grown up, um, obviously poor and they've had to scrape by. I mean, like um, Ninja teaches uh, uh, um, Chappie later on, like, oh, it's a dog eat dog world, basically. They, yeah. they see like this one dead dog from a dog fight and then the, the surviving dog like eating a nice bone. And um, and Chappie already knows about his demise at this point. Mm. Sees that it's like he goes, "Look, Chappie, you have to. The world is a horrible place, and you have to fend for yourself." And I do believe that's what a lot of cr- criminals think. Yeah, I do for a fact believe that it's like, "Look, you're not going to look after me. I have to go look after myself because nobody's looked after me before. So I have to go and do that." And that's what he was teaching Chappie. It's like you have to, but combined with Dion's lessons of you also have to take control of your life, but be a good person don't commit crimes don't hurt other people yeah. it's just Dion had very little time to sort of bring in that good and the criminals obviously had a longer time with him too but that good still managed to stay with him mm-hmm. you know um and it's <laughs> it it was it was just i just liked that i really really liked chappie's development yeah um you know the the point where um a ninja takes him and wants to go teach him how to live outside where he basically throws him in front of some other gangsters. Oh, you see yeah. him as a cop and then they throw a Molotov cocktail at him and they throw rocks at him and hit him with pipes. Um, and then he escapes and then he gets picked up by the, 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 the other the military guy, the military engineer. Oh yes. Uh, well, we, we forgot to mention that too. The, 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 the character that created the, the big giant mecha, which is called the moose. Mm-hmm. So it's just this overkill military yeah. robot. Um, yeah, he gets very jealous, and he wants to steal. He wants to steal the chip that controls the the robots, that so he can program something into them. Yeah, there's only like it's called the guard key or something. It's basically a security thing that stops anybody else from creating firmware. For it basically becomes unhackable. But I mean, it's an early device, and people don't know how to hack it at that point. Everything's hackable. <laughs> <laughs> so. Which I did like that they didn't really go on that route, but. Um, yeah, he basically captures Chappie uh, to steal the guard key. Um, and cuts up his arm for some reason. Well, he was because the robot was fighting back. And he's like, and it was like, which was, this was a really weird point for me because he treated it, he acted as like, oh, we're going to cut your arm off. Yeah. And then, the, and then he's like, okay, are you going to behave yourself now? And the robot's like, yes, 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 I'll behave myself. You know, like, and it's like, and there was moments you can see confusion in his face. Like, why is this robot acting like a child? Mm. But it doesn't matter. It's just a robot. It's probably just a program. Yeah. And then... Um, and then they're going to cut off the other arm and then Chappie just goes berserk and, and, um, it was weird though. They, they did this checkup, they did a literal checkoffs gun where he looks and he sees a gun and, and like his, his, his program like sees the gun and I'm like, oh, okay, he's probably going to grab the gun, shoot somebody and then escape. But he, no, no, that never happens. He just <laughs> kicks open the door and then runs away. I'm like, oh, okay. I guess that's a thing. <laughs> um, yeah. So he loses the thing, gets back to, um, Ninja and Yolandi, and he's lost his arm. He he's smoking or fucked up from the Molotov cocktail, and um, yeah, Yolandi's like, "What the fuck happened here?" You know, she's like so genuinely angry, like a mom angry at a dad for like leaving the kid out like too late or something, you know? Yeah. And like, why you said why did you do this? And he's like, "I didn't know this was going to happen," you know, like because he wanted to teach Chappie that life outside was like hard, you know, that that people were going to beat you and hate you for no reason. And, um, and so Chappie, I guess, did learn that lesson, but the whole time Chappie's like sitting, you know, like he's, he's like trying to, you know, do that fetal position type thing, mm-hmm. which is inherently a human thing. But I did like, I mean, that's how I guess how we relate to it is like, he's sitting there and Yolandi's hugging him and she has definitely accepted him as a living creature. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, yeah, so America finds a, another arm. Well, there, for... there was a whole bunch of spare parts that Dion left behind. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, so oh. they replaced the arm, give Chappie a new arm. Chappie's like really happy with his arm. Um, I think at this stage he learns about his time limit. Um, there's only got a few days left and that, that he has to help with the crimes, but he doesn't want to help with the crimes. Uh, then there's like a couple of gags where Chappie learns how to steal cars, oh. um, uh, throws knives at people because he doesn't want to shoot a gun. He doesn't like guns. Mm. Guns commit crimes. That's what he learned from his creator or his maker, Dion. Um, so basically Yolandi's mom, um, Ninja is dead and then maker is Dion. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and then and then of course uh, this gets like very uh, this movie gets very spiritually slash religious at some point where it's like Chappie asks Dion why would you make me just to die yeah and Dion basically has to come up with an answer but like a very sort of it doesn't satisfy 
Chappy, but he's like, I didn't create you to die. I created you so you could live mm. type thing. And I mean, that's pretty much what we're, we're, we're at, you know, we're, we, 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 we're made and we die, but we're not made to die. Even if there is no God, I don't think we're made to die. Even if the universe ends in nothing, I don't, you know, we're made to experience. I, Carl Sagan actually... says it the best. Um, said at the best, um, we are the universe's attempt at understanding itself. I think also uh, this was a point that I had a little bit of a nitpick about, actually, where, uh, you know, after Dion, like Dion is saying, you know, I, I I didn't think that you'd turn out like this, which to me, it's like, well, then, frick, how did you, like, well, then, I mean, you're the one who created the program. I mean, obviously, you knew that this robot would learn, learn and eventually he would learn, oh, by the way, your battery's going to die. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, okay. I, I, I mean, yeah, that was a... That point was a bit... Um, I mean, like, he should have known that just even Chappie being with the gangsters was going to cause this conflict. Because, again, he wanted... He wanted um, this is a very actual. This is a very God story, mm. or, or a story more of mankind, because it's and actually that makes the sense of the ending. Too, you know, like do we create God or does God create us? Oh, this, I've had this conversation with you before, mm. you know, and there's the there's the uh, the idea of you see this movie's just this movie's deeper than I think it lets itself show, mm. but it's also flawed with its thoughts. It's it's almost like the way I would say it's. It's like, it's like a teenager who read Nietzsche <laughs> and only read the first few pages. Like, yeah. he got the book of Nietzsche, read the basics of, of what he meant by God is dead. And was like, oh, God is dead. Ha <laughs> ha, I'm so, you know, I'm so edgy. Look at me, God is dead. It's like, no, there's more to it than just God is dead. You've got to understand the whole meaning behind the philosophy. I think, therefore, I am. It's not just, I think, therefore, I am, full stop. You've got to break that down and be like, okay, but well, what does that mean? Yeah. You know? Um <laughs> and it's 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 that's what like sort of this movie does, and I think actually even District Nine does that too. You know, like mm -hmm. because District Nine really speaks about racism, um, and I think this movie uh, Chappie is more about, I guess, God in the machine. Well, it's, you know, you know what I mean. I, I think yeah, it's more of like it, it. It's basically the story of humans creating robots. Sent, like, it's, it's pretty much, yeah, God creating humans and then humans creating robots replacing the elements of God. And then... Robots creating, like... Um, more robots. <laughs> yeah, like, robots creating more stuff, yeah. essentially. Like, more life. Uh, so it's... it's I, could, I could see that almost being a, a circular thing. Like, um, I could see, actually, God, like the Christian God, actually being a robot. Now, I don't mean to be blasphemous in any of this. It's just purely just me talking concepts. Um, but I could, I could see God, because the universe is so big that it could pretty much just be ones and zeros. I, I can't remember the philosophy that started this idea, but, um, it's, it's just so big that every possible thing could happen. Right. Mm. And that, that's more of a, that's a binary thing. Mm -hmm. Um, so eventually we get made and then we create robots and then robots get to that point where they create the universe and then they're you know, then they create their own universe and they create organic life again. Yeah. You know, like maybe it's one of those circular things. I don't know. I, I'm not sure where I want to go with this. But I like, <laughs> I like the idea of it. Um, that was at least what I picked up from it, especially mm -hmm. toward the end. Yeah, it's... it's. But we're getting ahead of ourselves. <laughs> yeah, okay. So, oh, well, I mean, look, Chappie's learning a lot of things. He's, I mean, there's there's a lot of gags. I did like the, ga the gag of, um, again, Chappie's never interested in using a gun. Yeah. Like he never uses a gun once he becomes aware. And, um... I mean, except for that time, I guess, where he's learning to shoot a gun, but he throws it on the ground. He doesn't want to do anything with it. Mm -hmm. And um, he never, like, even he gets given a gun when he has to go hijack a car, but he gets tricked by the other people, um, by the by Ninja and America, that um, that those are daddy's cars and that he must go get them back. Yeah. But instead, Chappie overreacts. Um, and then the people, every time they see him, they think he's an officer. But he throws the people out the car, destroys the car. It's like, stop stealing daddy's car! You know, it's like, it's not yours! You are a bad person! You know, it's, it's really... And he, and he speaks... To, we should also mention that he speaks in, in the same accent as Yolandi. So I thought that was a huge... Yeah, question. yeah, that's the very South African accent, um, almost. And, or very Zef. You know, <laughs> it's, it's... um Yeah, it happens. I, I, I thought it was quite cute. Um, yeah, for some reason, for a robot to have a South African accent. 
but um, yeah, so they, he does that. Then um, he start, and then he learns that actually, like after stealing all the cars, he learns it was crimes, mm. and he doesn't want to commit crimes because his maker doesn't want him to commit crimes. Yeah, and this is like again, this is like the the necessity versus what what is I guess what we perceive is good. Your maker, your God, doesn't want you to break those ten commandments, mm. but sometimes you do, so you can live. You have to steal. You have to, you know. It's it's. I, I, maybe I'm giving this movie too much credit, I but it was... it's just that's what I felt when I was watching it. Like I'm, I, I, I get that feeling. I understand. I don't like blaspheming. I'm not. A re- I'm not really religious, but I don't like blaspheming because I don't like the idea of insulting somebody or insulting other people in the name of somebody. Like. Like I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't do it with my dad's name. Like in the name of my father, fuck you, or in the name, you know. Like I wouldn't, I wouldn't do that. So to say, oh, for God's sake, like I don't agree with that attitude. I don't agree with insulting religious icons or whatever because it's like, why? All they're trying to really do is tell people to be good. You're essentially saying good should not exist or good is is, is shitty, and I don't like that mentality. Um, I do question the religion behind it. That's a whole different thing. But the people in it are like, you know, like Jesus, for example. Jesus pretty much just says, be good. Just be good, guys. Come on. Stop being jerks. And then be it's chill, like... And, drink a bit of wine. Yeah, drink some wine, eat some bread. You know, we'll wash your feet. <laughs> and then people are like, oh, but Jesus is such a jerk. I'm like, what are you talking about? Like, if, if firstly, if he did exist, then what would it matter? Like, he was trying to be a nice person and he died. Uh, and he, if he, if he did die and all that, he believed he died for your sins. He believed he alleviated your pain. So why are you angry at this person? Angry at the religion, I understand, but that's a whole different concept. Um, What's the thing of Jesus? I've never heard Oh, I've heard lots of people like, they just hate on Jesus like wow. hardcore. And I'm like, that's the weirdest person to hate on. Like, I could understand maybe hating Abraham or, you know, from, from like, if, you, if you're a Bible figures you want to hate, like Abraham, sure, or... Oh, what is that other that King? Um, King oh. David. King David was a dick. Like in the beginning, it was great, but in the end, I think he he like he betrayed a lot of people. Um, but he was just human, um, <laughs> you know. Uh, yeah, yeah. That's sorry to jump off, but it, it it does sort of tie in with um, uh, this this movie where there's this this religious concept and this need, um, and the maker doesn't. The maker wants you to be good. He wants to prove that. That AI is good, but now this AI has become evil, type of thing, quote unquote evil. I actually bad. read it. I actually read it as a different way. I read it more so as like, it's more so as uh, that you know, there's this idea, especially within religious context, that there is just there is there is an absolute good, mm-hmm. and everyone should just inherently know what absolute good is. And I think this is more so of, well, no, not really. Good is sort of our perception of it. Because, you know, Chappie only understood this is good. You know, these, like, crime The binary is, concept of good and evil. Yeah, yeah, like, crime is bad. But I'm just stealing back... You now I'm just getting back Dad's car. That yeah, kind of but, thing. but it wasn't a crime to him, then. That's ex- exactly. But to, you know, but... To us, I mean, obviously, we understand it as a crime because you and I, we've had more experiences than Chappie. Chappie's only lived for, like, what, three days at this point? Mm. So he's not... But at this stage, he's, like, he's definitely, I guess, in his teenage years. Yeah. But I, but anyway, so, like, the, the point that I want to make is, you know, there's... Some people believe that good is, like, we just, as human beings, we inherently understand good. I don't think so much. I think that it's, you know, because what, what, what could be some, what is good to some people is evil to some people. So I think this was more so of, there is no necessarily absolute good that we can understand. Hmm. We have to learn it. That's, that's what I read from that scene anyway. But, you know. Okay. No, I mean, yeah, I, can, I, I, I don't disagree with that. Um, we do definitely have, yeah, like when no, nothing is... I mean, there's always the, the argument, are humans inherently bad or, or, or evil, uh, evil or good? Um, and I do think we, I do think there is a black and white morality um, to, on, on certain things. Like, does, it comes down to a simple question, like, does it hurt the other person? Mm. Like, and I'm not just talking about a physical hurt, but like, you know, mentally hurt, or anything, you know, like the emotional scarring. You know, does it hurt or upset or does it cause a problem for the other person in mm. any way? If you taking that bread loaf, if that, does that 
what what problem does that cause that person? Now, the argument could again then be something along the lines of, okay, but it's a big corporation that makes bread. They wouldn't notice one bread missing. Sure, then there is actually no evil there. But but you're still stealing because if you stole from a small corporation, like like a small bakery or whatever that, that needs to sell every single loaf of bread just to break even for the day and you've stolen one, that fucks up this quota. Well, I mean, as I've explained to you before, when I worked retail, like that's... Well, I, 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 I know you're going to go with this. You're going to say... Um, you know, if, if something out of a big corporation is stolen, the people in charge of the floor are responsible for it. They have to then pay. Yeah, it, to it comes out it. of it comes out of the the sales floor salary. The, yeah. the guy, the big guy on top, doesn't even get touched. Yeah, no, no, I know, but but what I'm but what I'm saying is just from the outside. Like, you know, it is pretty much just the, um, you know, like to. If if it doesn't cause problems is what I'm trying to get at. If if stealing if, if say stealing from the bigger corporation doesn't cause problems, like it doesn't cause you problems as the as the as the, as the people on the floor or the retail it doesn't cause anybody problems. They are like oh one item's missing whatever. I mean we make up a profit every other way. That's fine. But is, so is there any evil in there? I mean you've you've done more good technically because you've made yourself happier. But you've made nobody else sad. But like the worst that happened was like oh where's this object? Oh we probably misplaced it. But but then, but then, but the actual concept on a smaller scale is if you steal from a small shop, just like stealing a candy bar could completely ruin that guy's like end of the month, mm-hmm. and you know, like that that causes problems. And so, you know, like that that's what I'm saying. It's like there, there's definitely this turn by, but you know, bit by bit. But I'm not saying everyone should just go out and steal from bigger places or <laughs> anybody that doesn't have any problems from it. The anonymous animators do not condone. Stealing. Yeah, we do. We do not condone theft, and we do not condone. We are. We, slavery. Are really we do not speaking. condone racism. We do not condone, condone misogyny. Let's just, just establish that. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, okay. So yes, I don't think we're inherently good. I don't think we're inherently evil. It's it's definitely all learnt stuff. But I do think, on on a basic, basic, basic level. Um, like me killing you, even if I didn't know good or bad, like at that point, me killing you and then seeing the sadness around it, around it, like I would then equate like, okay, that's actually bad, mm-hmm. you know? Um, so I wouldn't do it again because killing somebody is going to make other people sad and not necessarily just the, the fact that I've completely abolished your right to live, you know, talking about the, the, um, the result. Um, and I mean, this is, again, this is just, it's a very tricky discussion um we could probably make an entire podcast about well this. It, 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 again it, it's something that that um this robot he robot the robot had to learn entire philosophies in five days and yes he learned at a much faster rate yes. than, than a human did but even then he still towards the end was like you know like when he was very defiant of his owner like as a teenager you were at that stage where the maker comes up to him dion comes up to chappie and is like talk to me why are you angry at me what's what's going on and he was obviously angry at dion for putting him in a body that'll die and you could hear in the robot's voice that he was, like, terrified of dying. Why would you do this to me? And Dion was sad and, and sorry about it. But to question your maker is definitely a sign of, of some sort of intelligence. Not, not necessarily... And whether that maker be God, whether that maker be the universe, to question it is, like, it's a vital part of, of you growing up as, 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 as a living creature, as a thinking creature. I've discussed many, uh, many instances with my, with my roommate who... As she was, she's been on the show before. Uh, Reagan, who is you know very Christian, and I've spoken to her. It would be nice to actually talk to her about this movie after Ooh. she'd seen it. Yeah. I wonder how she would feel. Uh, but yeah, just I, and I've discussed with her uh, the philosophies. Well, any of, religious person, yeah. Well, well, I've discussed with her the philosophies of Kierkegaard because I think that she would very much appreciate Kierkegaard because Kierkegaard was actually a religious existential philosopher. Who believe who uh, who believed that um, that thinking and questioning God actually makes you closer to Him? Mm-hmm. That you know the worst thing you can do when you're a Christian is actually do what every everyone else tells you to do. That is mm-hmm. actually the worst thing because you are not thinking, you are not feeling, you are not being the human that God wants you to be. Yeah. So. Um, I, I don't know. I, I I very much appreciate that philosophy that you know to question God is actually to become closer to Him because that way you find your own answers. Well, you figure out who He is. Yeah. You, you start breaking it down, and it's like there's definitely that that the jump between the religious and the scientific where it's like okay, maybe 
we can't ask any more questions with the limits we've placed ourselves religiously. So now we have to go to the scientific version. You know, for all we know, I mean, I was, I was recently watching a documentary um, called Particle Fever, which was about the Higgs boson. And there was a lot of, like, speculation around it before the discovery, but it basically came down to... Um, there, there were two, the way I understood it at the time, figuring, finding the Higgs boson and not finding the Higgs boson solved a, a problem. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the problem was that the, we needed the Higgs boson for the standard particle model. And if it was there, it answers a whole bunch of physics questions. And if it's not there, it answers a whole bunch of other physics questions. So that we could just keep going in that direction. Because theoretical physics, you just keep compounding on it. Mm. Um, so if this is true, then these things could happen. Or these things could happen. Or these things could happen. So then you choose another branch of that. You're like, okay, if these are true, because if these other things are true. So once we find the Higgs boson, it answers questions on one of the two routes. Um, but then, actually, what... It, the, what that was that was the way I understood it at the time. For, after watching this documentary, what it was was if we f um it was the finding the Higgs boson. There was no doubt that it was there because it had to be there. Mm -hmm. The thing was the weight of the Higgs boson was the important thing. Mm -hmm. Um, and if it was, <laughs> if it was a certain weight, like I think it was one hundred forty four electro volts or something like that. I don't remember the measure. That's like that's nothing obviously because this thing is like super 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 tiny. Um, it, it creates the, it, it's basically that link between energy and mass. Mm -hmm. So it's <laughs> a thing. So um, the, 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 so the solution of it would be um, if it's 144 or 250, I think, or 150, I can't remember the, the, the measurements exactly. I would recommend people watching the Particle uh, Fever documentary. It's on Netflix. Yes. Or at least the Canadian one. Hey, we're not being paid by Netflix. It's on the internet somewhere. <laughs> so if they found if they found um, um, if they found it was a certain way, it meant that certain theory the theory of uh, what are the two th oh super 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 particles super super something super symmetry super symmetry was was true super symmetry uh, just balances out like so there's these particles and then there are bigger versions of the not bigger versions but they were like the, the like so you had um like a quark and then you had a squawk and, the, and that balanced each other out like sort of with and it's, it's part of the antimatter theory it's all explained in the documentary however if it was 150 or more um or whatever the number was 250 it meant that the multiverse theory was true and the problem with the multiverse theory being true is that within the limits of this universe, we could never find any other particle after the Higgs boson, anything that makes up the Higgs boson or made up the universe, because we'd need to be in those other universes. And to get to those other universes would probably be almost impossible, because they'd have their own set of rules. Like, you know, so like, for example, in, in our universe, gravity, I believe, is 9.8 meters per second. And in another universe, it could be three. So, <laughs> so we go there and we get ripped apart because our form doesn't map uh, like the way we, you know, the way physics works in our world or universe would not work in that universe. So we would never be able to ever figure anything out other than the Higgs boson that would be the last thing. And so they did. They got one of the measurements was that, and they were like, all these physicists are like, oh fuck, it's the end of science, you know? <laughs> and then the others, it was like, oh, wait, no, we got a whole bunch of other results here. Or, and then there was actually the super, the super symmetry theory was actually true. So they were like really happy about that. <laughs> so the Big Bang is more correct than multiverse. So multiverse is most likely not a real thing. Huh. The point of that being is, um, is that's what science does. Is so we, religion got to the point where we couldn't question God anymore. And then science came in and started questioning things. And, like, and then that didn't form in that model. So we found a new God which questionably could be the Higgs boson. And then uh, <laughs> the God particle, which was a bad nickname. It was actually called the goddamned particle because they couldn't find it <laughs> for so long. And that's like, we can't find this goddamn particle. <laughs> and then somebody wrote it as the, the God particle. Um, and then, so now our next step is to find what makes that. But it's like, we're finding, we're, we're finding out what makes the universe. And what made the universe was God. And we're getting closer to God. And so that's why I think science and religion or science and philosophy need to be so intertwined. But we're at this weird point where it's like, no, it's one or the other. And it really shouldn't be. Yeah. Actually, uh, well, that, that just because I, I, I used to say that, you know, didn't we create science in order to get closer to God? And some people have argued with me on this. But I, I think that, yeah, we kind of did. It's it. definitely good. Like a lot of it's to get 
to get closer to the creation. It's it's to I think it's to understand and explain. I think the reason science was created to is to understand and explain God. But Re- religion is really, in essence, a other than a philosophy in how to behave. It could also be seen as a um, a thought experiment, a scientific thought experiment. Hmm. You know, like oh, if God existed and these are the things He wanted us to do, this is how we would behave. Um, but take away the behavior, He created the universe, and how did He do that? You know, it's like oh, we don't have to ask Him how He did that. No, we want to know how He did that. How did He create the universe? And then it's like that's where that sort of breaks apart. But yes, yeah, so this movie can, I think, can get you to question these type of things because definitely Chappie does it. They don't do it enough, maybe. Mm. But again, they do have a time limit, and Chappie has to go steal things. He has to commit crimes. There's there was a lot really packed into this movie. Mm. Um, I'm surprised that they got as much as they did into it. And it and it still was told pretty well. Yeah. Um, you know, like nothing was ever felt like untold, except for my as my little nitpicks of things like where did Chappie learn this thing? Yeah. Obviously off screen, but it was so important. Why didn't he? Why didn't they show us learning it? Mm. You know, him learning to. Um, like, them establishing and holding a gun, and then maybe say at the end of the show, movie, he's, like, holding an assault rifle and being super good with it. Like, um, I can understand that, that being the tr- progression, because that's what they'd be teaching him off screen, but they've established that they taught him. Yeah. He, like, other things, they, they just don't establish, and then he just knows. Uh, yeah, anyway, so the movie goes on. Um, then the bad guy, whose name I can't remember, the, the military engineer guy. It was such a, such a thick accent, they actually had to give him subtitles. No, no, no. He was that was the, the villain, the no, the, the, the villain. guy. Had, yeah. I'm talking about the military guy. Oh, the military guy. Yeah, um, yeah. No, he, yeah, he was just he was just a douchebag. Uh, he didn't really contribute to the story other than making the opera need their money. Um, but they commit the crime. They, um, oh yeah, they also convince Chappie that knives, stabbing people with knives, puts them to sleep. Yeah. And um, he then realizes, oh, that's not what happens. He's like, no, no, no. And then, oh, yeah, that's when he realizes he's hurting the people. And he doesn't like hurting. He just thought, like, because he's throwing knives and ninja stars at these at these guys and killing them. But they're going to sleep. And he sees them as going to sleep. And then he sees this one police officer who's, like, crawling away. He's like, no, 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 you should go to sleep now. You should go to sleep. And the officer's like, no, please stop hurting me. Please, I don't want to die. And he's like, no, look, if I take it out, you should be sleeping. And the cop's like, no, no, please. And then you could see, like, like again, this square robot face with these two dots for eyes, like, actually has a thought in his head, like, holy shit, I've actually hurt this person. Mm-hmm. I almost, I killed him, and I've killed those other people. I've killed. Yeah. That's what I've done. And then you know, they get their money back, and then, um, you know, not only has he been lied to about the sleeping thing, but he's also been lied to about not getting his body back, and he gets angry at Ninja. And this is a transition that I really, really liked of Ninja's character, because the whole we, time I he's... I think we a- forgot to mention that, too, that the reason why Ninja wants... The, 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 the way that Ninja convinces Chappie to commit these crimes with him is that... He can buy him a new body. Yeah, yeah. And because then, the body's about to die out. And, and um, oh yeah, and the reason why the maker couldn't transfer his information from the one computer to the next, which could have been done because it's still all binary, was because it was consciousness and they couldn't just transfer consciousness. And then Chappie actually figures a way out using a bunch of PS4s and a, an internet connection um, that how to... You know, like write code to actually transfer consciousness, mm-hmm. and using um, uh, using Yolandi as his first te- test subject. So there, there's like a he actually uh, which comes. Well, back. he does it to himself, and then he tests Yolandi. No, I think Yol- wasn't Yolandi. Oh, you, that's right. He has yeah. the helmet on. He's like, Mom, look, I've discovered consciousness, and then he puts it on her, and then they do the main tests. Yeah. Um, yes, yeah, so and Ninja, and at this point, um. Yeah, so he gets angry. He, one of the reasons I got angry at the maker, and the maker's like, look, I can't just transfer your information. It's more complex than just binary. It's it's consciousness. If I had to transfer you, I'd, just, I'd be starting over again. You wouldn't exist anymore. Mm-hmm. And then, so, but Chappie discovers how to fix all of that and transfer it, um, <laughs> again, using, like, 10 PS4s. <laughs> they were overheating, even. Yeah. And, I mean, the joke is because PS4s are, like, really high-processing units. <laughs> <laughs> and... Yeah, so he's like getting all wor- worried about it. Um, he gets angry at um, uh, Ninja, and then yeah, well, I like this evolution of Ninja's character. Like you could see, he was he was sorry about this. Mm-hmm. He was like he, he was full of regret because um, like he can't help his now son. You know, it's like shit. You know, I shouldn't have lied to you. I fuck. I fucked up. Yeah. Like, and I don't want you to die either. Um, oh, and at this point, uh, at this point, the, p- the policemen have been shut down. The scouts have been shut down, right? 
Um, no, yeah, this was like this was like right before they get shut down because oh, yeah, as Chappie is committing, yeah, because Cha as Chappie is committing the crimes, they were filming the entire time, and mm. then the entire city is. Uh, uh, no, no, no. I think no, no, no. What happens first is uh, now that the the guy who created the moose. You know, he has the, 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 the firmware. He has yeah. the firmware, and then he... And that's he, how... He puts a virus, basically, in deactivating all the scouts, and because all the scouts are deactivated, um, crime goes super crazy yeah. in Johannesburg. It's just like, it goes... You know, the, the, the gangsters are taking over the city, just taking everything they want, stealing all the money. And and even then... And then he goes up to Sigourney Weaver's character and says, Hey, look, all the scouts are... You know they're all bunk now, so let's let's get my moose. And he's like, and she's like, no, 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 that's still overkill. Like we've still got cops. And then the and then that's when they see Chappie was helping the gangsters. And yeah. now but at this point as well, um, this guy has also seen that Chappie was fully self aware, and he's also like, holy shit, this is wrong. He, like he does the yeah. oh, yeah. thing, and he's like, no, no, no. Um, that's a that's a thing that it keeps doing. He yeah. even he even Father, uh, Son, Holy Spirit. You know. Yeah, yeah. The the is that a, is that an only a Catholic thing? Yeah, I think it's mostly Catholic. Okay, I, I, I don't know. I mean, I'm not one hundred percent sure. I don't. Remember. I was under the impression it was a Catholic thing. I, I once did it in front of somebody and, and no, I, oh, I remember my dad, I did it in front of my dad one time and he was like, how do you know that? He was like, you, you, you taught me. <laughs> <laughs> I saw but what you knew, okay. <laughs> so, uh, I, I guess he must have forgotten yeah. because I was pretty young when he taught me. Um, anyways, yeah, that's, oh, and he even, in, in the mechanic guy even invites Dion to church at some point, mm. which was, okay, whatever. Uh, yeah, so... So yeah, uh, so but and you could see somebody like that who, like, only God can create life, um, being quite against that type of thing. Yeah. Oh, Ironically, yeah. churchgoers don't like us creating life, but as long as it's natural life, then it's okay. Don't go down. That <laughs> <way>. <laughs> okay. Well, yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, there's a little bit that we've missed here and there, but pretty much it comes down to. Um, I just want to get to this point with with Ninja because. Um, the moose gets deployed. Uh, Dion does eventually reboot um, Chappie. And I can't remember how he gets the guard key again, but he gets it back, plugs into Chappie, reboots him. Um, and, and yeah, then, then, then they fight the moose. The moose finds number 22, gets his lands and starts yeah. shooting at things. Um, and... <laughs> yeah, yeah it, it's, 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 it's a massive shootout. It's actually a really awesome shootout scene. Um, so a lot of bullet dodging. <laughs> <laughs> very, very, uh, it was very violent too. The, the part where, cause this is when the moose comes down, remember? Mm -hmm. And. Oh, the first person he kills is America. Yeah. Where he grabs him with like this, um. No, first he steps hand. on him. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Steps on him with his, and then grabs him with his claw and then rips him in half and then just throws the other half at the wall. And then this obviously upsets Ninja. Ninja's like shooting him down. Um. And how does... Oh, look, there's just a big gunfight. Uh, Cha uh, Chappie, like, goes in, is getting ready to fight the moose. Yeah. He cooks a whole bunch of things, still not once using a gun. Uh, oh, no, no, he does. He actually picks up a... He picks up that big gun. Mm. Um, I guess so. he does use a gun eventually, but he uses it against the robots. I'm not exactly sure what that means. <laughs> and then, I'm not sure, I didn't hear it exactly, but when he ran and did the jump up so he could, like, plant the grenade knife into the, into the robot chassis, did he say, I've got the power! Because I... I, I just said power, and I was like, did he just make the He-Man reference? But it was like in so much noise, you don't really hear it. Oh, so, that would have been perfect if he did. Yeah, so he does that, hits, plants the grenade, and before he could activate the grenade, gets thrown off. They're shooting at the robot, there's this huge fight. It's a really fun fight scene, really, you know, it's a lot of special effects and people dying. <laughs> Very action-heavy movie, you know? Yeah. And then, um, Ninja gets shot, Dion gets shot in the stomach, um, Yolandi dies <laughs> she gets shot um oh yeah and then there was the sacrifice play scene which i told you i didn't like because yeah. um i would have liked to have seen a little bit more action in it in in some way but what happened is yolandi uh chappy and dion get into this into this van and then right away and then so the ninja tells them to leave so he can um so Yol oh, yolandi's is in the car she's still alive at this point um, he's like, no, um, I'll distract the, the monster, so the, the moose. And so he does, he distracts it by, he shoots at it, and then throws his gun on the ground, gets to his knees, and he's like, come at me! 
And the weird thing is, he could have just gotten in the van, because the van, by the time this moose had come down to attack them, was pretty much already outside. Mm -hmm. And he's like, come at me, and he's distracting. So then the moose does obviously get distracted by him, and he's coming to do the rip and half thing to him as well. And then Yolandi's like, no, and she like gets out the car, and Chucky's like, mommy, no, come back. And um, she grabs the gun, shoots at the robot, and then um, breaks his eye or something, fucks something up. And then he's like, fuck you, and shoots her, and she dies, like, straight away, because, I mean, you know, 30 caliber bullets are going <laughs> to render you useless. Um, Chappie gets, like, super destroyed, picks up the grenade pin. It was him, right? Picks up the grenade, pulls the trigger, and blows yes, up the yes. chassis. And then this obviously freaks out um, war mechanic guy, because he's like, oh, shit, my robot got completely destroyed by one of the small robots mm. and now the city is completely fucked and by itself I thought that he may, he was coming to that realisation but I think he cared more that his robot was dead yeah um <clears throat> off they go and uh Yolandi's dead um I think did they leave her there? uh yeah, 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 yeah. so yeah so Chappie and Dion leave to go to, to go transfer Chappie's brain uh, and Chappie's also like Daddy, uh, maker, maker, I figured it out. I can put your brain in, into a robot. I know how to transfer consciousness. They get to the, the, the place, they lock it down, um, and then they transfer Dion's body, uh, brain, uh, consciousness into a, to a, into a, into one of the test dummies. And then, um, and then they transfer Chappies over, over wireless into one of the nearby robots. Yeah. And, and, you know, pretty much they get saved. It's, it's all very, um, you know, dramatic. Oh yeah, but but sorry, back to the sacrifice play. What I wanted to actually say was, I would have preferred the sacrifice play to have been something along the lines of him actually distracting the robot, because there, there was no reason for Ninja to be a threat. Mm. He wasn't. Yeah. So the robot could have just kept on going and fly up and go attack the van or whatever. But, you know, that happened, and it just felt a little forced, because I get it that they wanted to kill off Yolandi, um, but... It's like it could have that could have also been a really exciting situation. Like Ninja could have done some really cool stuff as a human, mm. you know, like run up and hide behind things. And even though thermal viewers, but you, you get what I'm saying. Like I, I think some more could have been done with that. You know, Andy could have still come in and gotten killed, trying to save him. You know, it's it's there's so much that could have been still done about that, but it wasn't. And I guess they also had limited time with Dion, so they had to do. Uh, you know, I, I I get the shortcomings. Didn't like it. That's pretty much a scene I didn't like. That's why I dropped. Yeah, ba basically, basically, it was just this really over dramatized scene where he's like, "Come at me," and then he just like, there's that that look that he gives back as yeah. Yolandi. And yeah, sl slow motion, sparks flying down. He turns away, looks at the camera. Like intense music is playing. I think it was more on foot music playing. <laughs> yeah. Um. Then okay. So then at the end of the movie, the robot program gets shut down. Transvol. Uh, sorry, not Transvol. Uh, T Tetravol gets t shut down. Um, almost at this point. Um, it's not making any more robots, but Chappie Hexing creates another robot. They find the backup information of Yolandi's consciousness on a flash stick. Um, <laughs> maybe it's a one tetrabyte flash stick. And they, they plug that in and um, they transfer her information into a new robot body. The movie ends with the her data being put into, her, into the robot head and the head waking up and the rest of her body being built in the background. And, and this was something that I, I kind of thought it was sort of just sort of a passing thought that I thought about with this director is like, you know, this in District Nine. It's like, what is with this director making humans into non-humans? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I guess. I mean, it's. I mean, the last one again was to try and because again, Fundamenta in in District Nine was ra like racist towards the the prawns, mm -hmm. and this one was obviously. I thought they were going to go a lot more into sort of like the whole discussion, but I guess they didn't have time for it. But they were going to go into sort of the um, oppression of, of now robot-minded AI, whatever, you know, because now Dion's in this robot, so mm. he was a human before, now he's a robot, now he can live forever type thing. Um, you know, so, I mean, as you can tell from, from this quick, this quick rundown, what, like an hour and 40 minutes, that it's, it's, it's a, it's an enjoyable movie. I would say watch it. Mm. I mean, like, Again, if you're super nitpicky, because there were a few, there were some things like for me, for me the fact that that uh, he uh, Chappy Chappy figuring out how to transfer consciousness into a computer. Oh, it was very Deus Ex. Very. Yeah, it was a little bit of a stretch for me. Um, 
Yeah, it was. It was. Yeah, he figured it out like that. Again, he. I guess he's supposed to be super, super smart. Um, because uh, you know, and I'm actually curious if Dion would also then all of a sudden get that speed of intelligence. Because Dion was already really smart as a human, right? Mm. He created AI, um, but by himself even. Because I mean, actually, really, I think in that type of thing, you'd have a lot of people working on that. Um, but yeah, I don't know. It's it's a movie that makes you ask some questions if you let it. Mm. You can ignore this movie. This can this this it can be a forgettable flick. I think if you if you watch it and you watch the action sequences and you're like, oh, this is an action heavy movie. Yeah. Um, you can definitely ignore a lot of the undertones of what's going on there. Um, but I do feel the philosophies are very juvenile hmm. that the movie tries to bring up. It doesn't explain enough. It leaves too much of it to, you know, it's like, hey, what do you think, wink? <laughs> um, and I mean, I'm not against obviously having people think for themselves, but you know, we need a bit more than the, 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 the sh shoulders shrugged up and, you know, a little yeah. smile. So yeah, I go, I, I stick to my, my 6.5. Yeah. I mean, to be fair, an 80 is like a B minus. To you. To me. What is an A plus? 99%? It's like, yeah, it's like 97 and up. Holy shit. Yeah. Wow, you guys are strict. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, look, let's just be fair, like, South Africa's pass rate is now dropped to 30%. So <laughs> it's, I mean, it's not a good thing. Uh, That's the public schools, by the way. Um. Okay. Uh, well, there we go. We're done. Yep. Is there anything else you want to add? No, I think we covered way more than we should. Yeah. Oh, well, I mean, it's just, uh, just two people talking about a movie. Well, let's let's face it. I'm a huge philosophy nerd. You're a huge science nerd. No, yeah, I'm not even a... put, you got my philosophy and my science. You got my science and my philosophy. That's... I, I get the reference. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> two great tastes that taste great together. Right, so if you guys want to contact me and tell me how awesome I am, you can contact me at the anonymous animators at gmail.com or the you can go visit the tumblr anonymators yes dot tumblr dot com. <laughs> spelling I know is shitty um, but it's pretty much stand I don't think anonymous has an American spelling does it because I know you guys hate the letter U for some reason no it's so not it's, the same way so it's not the same way so it's pretty much just I mean if you type in anonymous animators into Google and you're a terrible speller, it'll find the spelling for you and I think you'll actually find it pretty quickly and then all the email connection stuff is on the YouTube page um, on the link below, on the doobly-doo. Doobly-doo. And, yeah, uh, I don't know if there's anything else that you want to pump. Um, well... Emily is a fellow artist and cartoon maker. Yes. So... Um, uh, you know, I, I, just, I like to doodle the thing. Yeah, so I don't know, just leave a Tumblr and then... Uh, so I'm neuroticartist.tumblr.com. I'm also NeuroStreet on DeviantArt. Okay. Um, and that's mostly the galleries that I... Man. Yeah, um, I guess uh, my Tumblr is the Lost Boon, the Lost Boon, B O O N E. <sighs> I just put arts up there sometimes. <laughs> I'm not the most competent artist, but I try. So yeah, uh, send me a, a, a mail um, and let me know what you think of stuff. And if you don't, then that makes me sad. Let us, uh, if you want us to review a movie or a show, let us know. Yeah, anything you want us to watch and tell you about, because obviously our opinions are so important. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, maybe we can validate something. I should, yeah. All right, so thanks again. See you guys later. And uh, we'll see you in the next podcast. Mm.